we wonder as conservatives, why is it that somebody would continue to vote Democrat when Democratic policies are harming them? And we make a really bad assumption. We think that that means that they're gonna start voting Republican. It doesn't just simply work like that. The reason why they're not voting Republican is because they believe the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. You ran for governor this past fall against Governor Kathy Hochul. And I wanted to kind of pick your brain a little bit. You, you came within six percentage points, of course, of winning much more than any Republican candidate. In recent memory for that election, you got 47% of the vote, which many people sort of said, there's no way that, especially given how many Republicans have left the state due to draconian COVID policies and rising crime rates and et cetera, many people just kind of wrote off New York as being probably even more blue than, than before. What was it that you told yourself and you told your campaign staff as you went into that campaign to say, hey, this, this might be a winnable race? And that would be an accurate analysis that it was becoming more blue. 3.3 million more Democrats than Republicans of all registered voters in the state, only 22% of the state are registered as Republicans. Yeah. Uh, so certainly an uphill battle for any Republican. At the end of the day, we got more Republican votes than uh, any statewide Republican candidate in 52 years. And that included Republicans, Democrats, independents yeah, too, is a broad coalition. Uh, working hard, not just in areas where people were typically voting Republican in the past, but getting to places the Republicans hadn't been in a really long time to earn the support from communities that had been voting Democrat, uh, different uh, constituencies. Uh, we won the Asian American vote, for example, yeah. here in New York City, Chinatown in Manhattan, Sunset Park in Brooklyn, Flushing in Queens. Uh, it's a predominantly Democratic constituency, but they, the message of improving the quality of education in our schools, making our streets safer, it connected with them as it did with Dominicans or Orthodox Jews and, and others. Uh, so that type of hard work starting early, 19 months to the day before the election, uh, putting together a good key team, having a good strategy, working hard, taking absolutely nothing for granted. Uh, we were all in all day, every day. Yeah. And fortunately, while we might have come up just short in our race, uh, a whole bunch of different congressional districts in this state flipped. So we did our part here in New York to make sure that the Democrats were no longer in charge of Washington. Nancy Pelosi yeah. no longer had a speaker's gavel. Yeah, and now the Republicans are in charge of the House. Yeah, so unlocking new constituencies, tapping into the distrust that many New Yorkers have with, with, the, with how Democrats have run the state for so long. I'm wondering if I can ask you about mail-in voting because there was a lot of G uh, GOP operatives who were discouraging mail-in voting or absentee voting or saying, hey, if you're gonna do an absentee vote, just bring it in election day to avoid any chances of something happening with that. And do, you, do you think that was a mistake for the Republicans to discourage mail-in voting? And if so, how would you encourage them to approach it going into future elections? If there is a proposed change to election law in some state out there that Republicans, conservatives disagree with, you can debate whether or not that's a good idea to pass. Yeah. But once it's passed, you have to do that yeah. better than the Democrats. Make yeah. them regret their decision to implement it in the first place. Nevada is a great example mm -hmm. where they weren't leaning into ballot harvesting. They weren't leaning into early voting. And then you had a big storm hit northern Nevada and then all of a sudden you're losing a Senate seat yeah. that you would have otherwise won had you been leaning into those laws. Uh, so my message to conservatives, you stand up for what you believe in, in, in advocating, debating, uh, in, informing, educating, when there's a proposed change that you disagree with. But once the Democrats actually pass the change, beat them at their own game. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So let's talk about New York for just a second, uh, and then we'll move on. You're, in 2024, there's a Senate seat up for grabs, uh, and there are, of course, the congressional uh, races down ballot and the state Senate and representative elections. What do you see as some achievable goals for the New York GOP in 2024, and what needs to happen between now and then to get to that point? In 2018, the Republican candidate for governor got about 15% of the vote in New York City. We got just over 30% of the vote. We need to keep building off of that. Uh, that means that this year in New York City Council races and other local races across the state, uh, we have to be working hard everywhere, red areas, blue areas, it doesn't matter, uh, to make sure that we're recruiting the best candidate, that, that they're running a fantastic campaign and we're getting them elected wherever possible. And we do have a great opportunity to flip a lot of seats this November. Uh, this needs to be viewed as a bridge to the future. I spent a lot of my time inside of New York City to get 30% of the vote. Yeah. I knew that if we got less than 30% of the vote, we'd have no chance of winning. Sure. If we got 35% or more, then it starts to become difficult to lose. Yeah. 
I had to spend a lot of my time in the city to get 30%. What we need to do is get to the point where four years from now, the Republican candidate is able to spend a little bit less time inside of the city and get 35% or more. Yeah. That means you can't wait until it's three and a half years from now and then all of a sudden wake up and start campaigning against in the city. Uh, you need to work on this over the next three and a half years. And the same thing leading into places like Syracuse and Rochester and Buffalo and elsewhere all around the state. It's a big, diverse state. And the reality is if you took four of the five boroughs of New York City off of the map, it's a red state. Yeah. But because of those four heavily populated Democratic uh, enrollment advantages that exist throughout these four counties, it becomes a blue state. Uh, but we have to build upon the progress that was made. I will tell you that there are a lot of Democrats who are waiting with open arms when I was showing up in their area. We wonder as conservatives, why is it that somebody would continue to vote Democrat when Democratic policies are harming them? Yeah. And we make a really bad assumption. We think that that means that they're going to start voting Republican. It doesn't just simply work like that. The reason why they're not voting Republican is because they believe the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. Yeah. Republicans have to earn their support. They yeah. actually think, well, they might be critical of the Democratic Party. There are a lot of people out there who are open-minded, but for now, they actually think that the Republican Party is even worse. Sure. So we have to show up, keep showing up over and over and over again. And every race that's on the ballot, nothing should be left off the map. Recruit great candidates for everything and try to win whatever you can.